to the channel. Here I share scareful stories, stories to make you scared, make you think, make you wonder, and maybe, just maybe, make you a little more careful. If you like what you see, please give the video a like, leave a comment below, and consider subscribing to the channel. Now, the scareful story of Kyle Clink Scales. Kyle went missing on January 27th, 1976, and he was found December 7th, 2021, after 45 years. Kyle was a student at Auburn University, and he left his job at the Moose Club in LaGrange, Georgia, to drive back to school on the night of January 27th, 1976. Both he and his 1974 Ford Pinto were never seen again. That was until December 7th, 2021, when a call was made to 911 saying there was a car in the water off County Road 83. The car, whose top had rusted away and whose hatchback was open, was confirmed to be Kyle's by the license plate. Bones were found in the vehicle and are pending confirmation that they are human and Kyle's, but a wallet with Clink Scales ID and credit cards was also found in the vehicle. The sheriff's office said that the location the car was found was three miles off the normal route Kyle would have taken back to school. It is unknown if the creek was searched when he first went missing. What is known is that over the years, Kyle's parents, John and Louise, never gave up hope of finding their son. They offered rewards and tried to keep their son's disappearance in the news. They printed tons of bumper stickers and asked owners of campers and RVs to put them on their vehicles so they could be seen all over the country. Ultimately, they became champions of creating a national clearinghouse for missing persons. So what happened that fateful night? Investigators originally thought that Kyle may have left on his own accord. He had dropped out of college once before and by all accounts wasn't loving being in college again. But his parents insisted that he wouldn't have just left and that they knew the struggles he was having with school. So there was no need for him to disappear without talking to them. Co-workers interviewed soon after Kyle's disappearance say he had an encounter with a difficult customer that evening and was a bit upset when he left work. The manager also stated that Kyle had a few drinks prior to leaving work that night, although he didn't appear to be drunk. With both Kyle and his car missing and the possibility that Kyle had been drinking that evening, police searched the roads he could have taken home looking for signs of a car going off the road. They found nothing. The most likely body of water he could have driven into was the Chattahoochee River. The police didn't think there was much chance his car went into the river because at the time, the water level was very low, only about an ankle deep, making it impossible for the car to be completely submerged. Early on, they received a tip that their son was in Texas and John quickly went in search of him there. Turns out it was a case of mistaken identity. In 1979, John wrote a manuscript entitled Kyle's Story, Friday Never Came, about his missing son. He sent it to television networks and eventually it was published. Around that same time, they increased the reward for information about what had happened to their son. About a year later, Kyle's dad testified in front of Congress about his frustrations in trying to find his son. Illinois Senator Paul Simon was looking into writing federal legislation to try to aid in missing persons cases. He wanted to create an FBI database for missing children, along with a database for unidentified bodies. Things we consider commonplace today all started back in the early 1980s, and Kyle's parents were part of the push to help find and identify both missing children and adults. A potential answer for them came in June of 1981 when a man in Oregon claimed to be the missing Kyle Klinkscales. The man claimed to have lost his memory in an automobile accident and had taken on a new identity. Very quickly, however, the man's parents came forward to say that the man was in fact their son and that he had never suffered from amnesia. They were not certain why he was claiming to be Kyle. This marked another disappointment in the long search for the Klinkscales' son. 
In April of 1985, the Klingskills were present when then-President Ronald Reagan announced a plan to have law enforcement, schools, and community groups work together to improve child safety. They also began their own organization, Find Me, to aid in the search for missing adults. When he'd been missing 10 years, Kyle's story was featured as part of a television show, Missing Two, Have You Seen This Person? The show generated multiple leads, but none of them panned out. In 1987, a credit card belonging to Kyle and registered to John Clink Scales was found near Flat Shoals Creek near the Salem Road Steel Bridge. Despite possibly having been out in the elements for 10 long years, the card still looked brand new. The condition of the card was confusing and led police to think that it may have been buried and only recently surfaced. The card also had expired three years prior to Kyle going missing, bringing into question if this card would have been in his possession at the time he disappeared, or if it was more likely from when his wallet had been stolen in 1973. But this being the first real lead in the case in over a decade, the police went all out trying to see where it would lead. A helicopter was used for an aerial search looking for signs of his vehicle and inmates from the county prison were asked to help dig around the creek bank looking for any signs that Kyle was buried there. Nothing was found. The minute I read where the credit card was found, I went to look if this was the same creek where his car had been found, thinking what if they could have found him 35 years ago and feeling so sad that such an opportunity may have been missed. But Shoals Creek is not where his car was ultimately found. In 1989, Unsolved Mysteries did a story on Kyle and several tips were called in, but it still resulted in not much happening over the following 10 years. But around the 20th anniversary of his disappearance, the police reported that they had received a tip that Kyle had been killed and buried in the backyard of a house and his car had been dumped in a lake. Police responded to the tips by digging at the property as well as draining a lake in search of Kyle. Eventually, it was revealed that police were investigating a man named Ray Hyde. Hyde had a criminal history of car theft and drug dealing, and he was also a patron of the Moose Club where Kyle worked. Had Kyle overheard or seen something he shouldn't have? Was he murdered to keep him quiet? There was never enough evidence to charge Ray Hyde with having any involvement in Kyle's disappearance, and he died in 2001 for claiming his innocence. Fast forward almost 10 more years to 2005, when Kyle's parents received a tip from someone claiming to know what happened to their son. The man claimed when he was a young boy that he had witnessed a relative help dispose of Kyle's body. He reported that Kyle's body was put in a metal barrel, weighted down with concrete, and then put in a pond. One report stated that there was also a tip received saying that later Kyle's body had been moved from the pond and placed in his car. The top of the car was then smashed before being hidden somewhere unknown. The tips led to searches of both a lake and a pond, but nothing was ever found. There was a spot where a barrel may have been in the pond, but it had since been moved. In 2005, an arrest warrant was issued for Jimmy Earl Jones. Jones was a known associate of Ray Hyde, and even though investigators didn't believe he had murdered Kyle, they believed he knew what had happened and had helped to cover it up and had been keeping quiet for decades. A woman who was thought to have also been involved in the cover-up was also arrested. The plan was to have Jones testify against her. That never happened. When the time came to testify, Jones suddenly changed his story to say that the woman had not been involved. He also changed the story of what he witnessed way back in 1976 several times, ultimately leading police to state that his statements were useless to the investigation. In the end, he pled guilty to making false statements to the police and received a nine-year sentence. 
At the time he was sentenced, the judge stated that he deserved to be punished for the pain he had put Kyle's parents through. He was released from prison in 2013. Police aren't saying whether or not they believe Kyle died from foul play or if his death was the cause of an accident. However, the roof of the car having been rusted away leaves open the possibility that one of the tipsters was correct. Was Kyle murdered and his body placed back into his car, the roof smashed before being hidden in the creek? Does that explain why his car was found three miles off his normal drive back to school? Or was Kyle the victim not of a crime, but of an unfortunate accident that has only just recently been discovered. Sadly, Kyle's father died in 2007 and his mother earlier in 2021, prior to the discovery of his car. They never knew what happened to their child, but they had never stopped searching for him. So what do you think? Do you think Kyle was murdered or do you think he just got into an accident on the way home and it just took way too long for his vehicle and him to be found. Maybe he fell asleep and drove off the road or swerved to miss something on the road and drove off into the water. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about this scareful story. And until next time, stay safe and stay careful.